인터넷은 지금 현재 인터넷이 너무 느리다. 그래서 새로운 인터넷을 만들어가지고 이제 AI 인터넷 만들어서 굉장히 빨리 돌아가는 거고 이 사람이 지금 유넷 만들어서 꽤 부자가 되었습니다. 이미 저 How long have you been, you know, when was it established, u n e t Uh, we were launched, uh, so we are spin-off of Singularity Net, and we were launched in 2011, November 2011. Before that, we were incubated, or we were a project within Singularity Net, so I guess we started to think and to kind of build architecture and experiments and so on in 2019. But then we became a separate spin-off in 2021, November, end of November 2021. They asked me to invest in your company, but I think, you know, I missed the chance. Uh, I may invest now. <laughs> uh, buy the coins, or what do you say? It's. I mean, uh, there, there is a, there is a secondary market. Oh, okay. Uh, we are, yeah, there are exchanges which are listing us. Nunet is utility token. This is what I can say. Yeah. So there are, there are um, yeah, it is possible, uh, but it's, it's through the exchanges and yeah. not, not through us. What kind of exchanges? Uh, I would like not to speak about that mm. because that's not our primary goal of oh, okay. having Nunet. Because the token is utility token which we are, we are building computational ecosystem to use this token to settle transactions within the, within the ecosystem. Okay, that's very good. Let me uh, sort of, uh, could you let Korea know who you are and what you do? So my name is Kabir Vetas. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Nunet. We are three co-founders, Ben Gersel, mm -hmm. uh, CEO of Singularity Net. Uh, we were Weinbaum, who is the author of open-ended intelligence concept and the philosophy, which we, to some extent, try to follow, but uh, yeah. Uh, and then we have David Lake in the in the council of Nunet, who is a representative of Singularity Net, our from from whom we spin off. And uh, yes, so I'm. Uh, I read all about your white paper, and you know you sent me all of. The you know everything. <laughs> so I'm myself. I'm uh, well. So right now I'm a CEO and CTO of Nunet. CTO? Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm CEO, CEO, CEO and CTO and I'm uh, basically uh, lead architect of the, of the, of the, of the, um, uh, of the NUNET architecture. Yeah. Why do you call it NUNET? Because it's a new internet? So there are two stories about the name. One is exactly what you said, it's new net, <laughs> new net, it's not internet, it's new net, new net. Another one is that there is... There is a mythological entity called Nunat, which is a goddess of ocean, Egyptian goddess of ocean. Oh, I didn't know that. So, uh, yeah, so this is another more, let's say, poetic aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And because we met, uh, we met, three of the founders, we met in, uh, in Brussels, in, um, in an institution, academic institution called Global Brain Institute, which was researching how the the internet can become, or the network can become intelligent itself yeah. as a concept of uh, decentral, distributed intelligence, or collective intelligence, which basically comes how from the primordial ocean, some kind of intelligence and life can spring up. Of course, we are, we are, we are working with pretty technical, let's say, down-to-earth things, protocols, networks, API stacks, and stuff like this, etc. However, the point is to figure out how can we relate computers, which all we have devices, I mean, in our pockets, how can we use them in order to vote? For the, let's say, to, to kind of vote what kind of, um, what kind of AI or what kind of, uh, what kind of things we would like to use our computing power for. Mm -hmm. So we hope to have this, yeah, so uh, ability. So you have, uh, you are, are you having some sort of voting system, voting engine? Uh, not really. I mean, when I'm saying voting, it's not exactly voting because one of the ways to vote is by, uh, how do you say, vote by your, by your feet. Oh. You walk away or you work to somewhere where you want to be, to community, to some sort of uh, 
collective which is trying to do something. So since most of the people have computing power, like yes. phones and uh, laptops, small businesses have also more like mini clouds, maybe private clouds that are smaller, bigger, telecoms. And this can be used for, for example, training machine learning models or AI or running something. And by using this compute power, we practically vote what will happen with, uh, with the world of computing. Mm. So, and before coming to tokens, before coming to transactions, we also have to build a deployment system where those machines can communicate to each other, can enable different algorithms to run on them. So this is what we're working on. And of course, the, the, the tokenomics part is part of it because we want to build a system where machines can, uh, let's say, we should be able to pay for each machine or reward each machine for the work that it was done. Exactly what was the um, requirements of, that, of the owner of that machine. Let's say my phone or your phone. So basically you will be able to to give your computing power to the cause that you believe in, mm -hmm. and also to be rewarded for that mm -hmm. with tokens, which are... Can you yes. have the hypercycle AI boxes? Yes. What is the difference between uh, you know, that and if you have any device, are you developing so, any device? Uh, that is one of the differences. So I you think, have it, have it. Uh, well, it's, it's a little bit, let's... We have certain, uh, we do, so Nunet, we do not do vertical integration, which means we, we develop, develop protocols, APIs to connect to what exists, which means machines that we already have, okay. or let's say private clouds which already exist. If somebody, and we, uh, if somebody builds a new machine, we are looking for how do we integrate that into Nunet voluntarily, or how, how they, if, if a person wants to connect to the network, we basically provide the binary to install and then that becomes a connection. So we avoid vertical integration because basically we don't believe in it. We believe in, in the protocols and open, open protocols which are accessible where we have a choice. It's a strategy, it's a technology strategy, it's a business strategy. So, uh, yes, uh, that's one. Another one is that we are, not, we are blockchain agnostic by, by, by design which means we basically the computation that we're doing is not on blockchain, it's off-chain. However, we use blockchain in order to settle, let's say, settle agreements between machines and algorithms in order to do some work, to reward, let's say, machines for certain things that were done, et cetera, and so forth, to do the escrow accounts. However, it's not something that we build into the system itself. We sort of looking, we're building certain abstraction layer which will allow us to communicate through different blockchains that that, that are useful. And also we want to enable users to choose which blockchains they want to use. Mm. For different use cases, it could be different blockchains may make more sense. So that's basically more or less a difference. Do you consider HyperCycle or AI boxes your competitor? Uh, so I think, first of all, we are not alone in the space who recognized that this decentralized computing is, uh, is the future. And Basically, it came with 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 the, with the speed of internet, yeah, speed because of internet. speed of connection allowed us to start thinking how can we distribute computing, not only in the in a single let's say uh, room or building, but across the across the world. So, uh, and it's always there is another. Well, we are open source and we are kind of um, adamantly open source. And have, being open source allows us to basically interoperate with other, uh, other projects in the space. So depending on, on strategy, depending on the technical uh, decisions that projects make, we can, uh, we can position differently. We can either integrate or we can work together. Or we kind of become uh, looking, we are looking to the same, let's say, uh, market niche, if we, if we kind of say this. However, there is another aspect that if we take a decentralized computing industry or space at all, as such, I think it's a fraction of the whole computing space, of, the, of computing that happens in the cloud uh, and et cetera and so forth. Do you so, think AI boxes of HyperCycle will last? Do you think it will go away? Uh, I am not sure how to answer. 
I mean, the hardware is always getting updated. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean doesn't mean that we don't use uh, old hardware. We also have we are using old hardware. So, uh, well, I it's 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 a strategy. I cannot really say that it's wrong or right. It's not the strategy that we chose at Nunet to 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 go along. However. Uh, we are also actually actually I have a I have a hypercycle AI box, which uh, yes we 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 got it as a as a, how to say as a token of uh, collaboration and we kind of trying figure, to figure out how can we basically implement Moonet in that. Uh, it's a computer. I mean it's a computer as, as all that. so basically what what we are looking at Moonet, we are taking a computer operating systems which are out in the world and we're looking how do we connect it to Nunet. Independently of what kind of operating system is running. Of course, the, the primary one is Linux, but we also will be looking to Windows, to, to, to Android, possibly to, to Mac OS. So for us, it's, it's yet another trial to, to see whether we can uh, interoperate. Yeah. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. So uh, Ben uh, actually owns uh, quite a lot of your shares. So it's not exactly like that. Basically, we have a utility token, mm -hmm. and there is a certain uh, team allocation. Mm -hmm. So we are co-founders, which have certain certain allocation, mm -hmm. but it's not ownership. So you it's it's so that, that, that you're is important. Nunet is owned by the community. So, yes, we are also token holders as the founders, but it's not owned by us. Okay, yeah. Okay, got it. And uh, are you planning to list in many, you know, exchanges or you're not thinking of that as a strategy? I will not comment. Okay, good. That's, uh, that's okay. Anything else? You would like to publicize in Korea about your unit? And yes, so I'm happy to, uh, let's say, to, to, to bring a message. Mm. And uh, please join. We are, first of all, we are looking for the, so we are developing what we are called, what we're calling development, community developers program. Basically, we are inviting community to develop with, to develop Moonet itself. For the open source, basically open source practices, because uh, if we want to build an ecosystem and technological ecosystem which lasts, so we believe that it cannot be static, which means it has to evolve all the time. Yeah. Depending on what other, as you said, let's say hardware goes away, yeah. some new hardware, hardware comes comes along. Away. We have to, if we want the the system to be persistent in the in, in time in the world, it has to evolve with the world. And in order to do this, we have to get information and more community members implementing. Have you been to Korea? Not South yet. Korea? Not yet. Not yet. You can come. I have a, a contract with the Let You in Edu, which is an education sort of a body, it has a platform, a marketplace, and everything. And they have a company for the last 10 years teaching semiconductor. Designing structure and software programs and all that, and we would like to have that. You know, Ben asked me to sort of do a education program called AGI Edu. Uh, with that, you know, top level will be robots, robot design, semiconductor design, and even Unit design <laughs> or the, the software. And in the bottom, we are teaching generative AI like Mid Journey and all that very simple ones. So it's an education, and you need that education uh, to spread AGI or BGI or whatever, right? So, so in this sense, so we are part of the, let's say, not only, but the main single internet ecosystem. Yeah. We have a lot of AI developers. Uh, so, come, I can bring all the, uh, the, the developers. If I position Nunet, so Nunet is concentrating on the deployment of compute workflows. We're not building AI. I know. We're building networks. 
and AI is being built in other spin-offs. And that, 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 this is what makes ecosystem an ecosystem where we specialize, where we are doing something best, and then we interoperate in order to build something more. So in, in terms of this, so Moonet will allow people to deploy the AI engines and whatever AI they build on this decentralized hardware. But we're not building AI ourselves. Okay. It's, it's, it's a platform for developers to be able to deploy the workflows on a, yeah, on a potentially cheaper, maybe closer hardware, mm. and which is decentralized, which is not the cloud. Oh, okay. But still people have to learn you know, how to develop your program. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we are kind of uh, more on the technical side of things. So at least, at least in the beginning, uh, we are inviting testers into the network and basically developers who are yeah, more technical than... However, we have all the all other, let's say, activity, mm -hmm. like uh, information, documentation, spreading the word. Yeah, spreading word in PR. Yes. <laughs> With the, uh, what do you see your new name in five, five years? Uh, I see... First of all, as I, as I mentioned, the developer community, that we are not alone developing it. So that I would like to see more technical proposals and input. Not only technical, but at the end of the day, it, it kind of turns into technical, coming from the community developers. And uh, however, that also, and application developers building things using Lunet as an infrastructure layer. And the third thing, interoperating, because there are, let's say, there are many aspects of this decentralized computing. Uh, computation, uh, storage, security, protocols, etc. and so forth. And there are quite a few startups, and not only startups which are developing that. So the, the, the other one is integrating, using, sort of integrating this ecosystem and using each other's code as an open source, let's say, project. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.